Good evening traders, it's Mark here from the Day Trading Room. It's just gone 9 o'clock London time and the Dow Cash market has just closed. Futures have got another 15 minutes to go. Um, Dow down 135, Futures down, uh, Dow Futures down 140 and the S&P down 15. Uh, we've pretty much closed not far from the point we opened. Uh, actually, no, we're about 30 points away from where we opened. So not, not too far really in the scheme of things. But um, I just wanted to run through what we got up to today and some of the reasons behind the trades we did in the office. And um, hopefully maybe you guys will pick up some um, some pointers from it. Um, basically we opened up down about 100. The uh, close yesterday was 10.157. We opened up at 10.055. My uh, overnight levels of interest were 10.076 and 10.117. And my overnight low was 10.029. We had data coming out at 3 o'clock London time. So we got this sort of action where we were trading in this triangle here. Um, any trades you want to take in the morning, you're looking, especially before data, um, you're not looking for anything significant. Um, the, the range in the morning before data tends to be slightly lower than the range um, when you have no data because people would prefer people who have got a lot of money to put on the table and other time frame type uh, traders prefer to see what the uh, data is before before committing so we've got this sort of wedge pattern here and you could feel the tension it was battling backwards and forwards and it, actually the range was, was 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 reasonable it wasn't wasn't large but it was tradable so I drew this wedge here um, and I was prepared to take a break in either direction uh, when you get a gap down of this situation, the ideal setup is to is to see the market push up slowly, and then you see that large candle pushing down, and there's your entry, there's your stop, and you're looking for new lows on the target. We didn't get that, but what we did get was this wedge pattern here, classic wedge, getting a lot of people interested, waiting for the market to tip its hand, and boom, we broke out of the wedge, quick quick on the short, get short, your stop's going to be back into this wedge here and you're looking to scale out the majority of it um, on the initial pulse. So that's exactly what we did. We took the short there, took a, a scale out there, took two scales out there, pushed back up, closed at break even on the last batch. Lovely scalp, nice start to the day and now we wait. We know we've got the data coming up at three o'clock and we just watch this market grind down slowly. Um, I was actually looking for this pullback to this wedge area to go short on again, but I didn't take it because I was a little bit concerned about these ticks. And I was also concerned about the, the lack of distance this had moved away from the wedge. If we'd come down here and then pull back, um, I'd have looked to probably hold the majority of the position and add on the pullback for a further flush. But as it was still slightly mixed, I didn't get involved in that and left it. We had some data coming out at three o'clock and the initial spike was down. Um, so when you've got the initial move is down, you're looking to for a pullback. You can't see it very clearly on the one minute chart here, but we've got this sort of action where we push down, we pull back, we push down again, we paused, and then you wait to see that tape selling coming in. The tape selling comes in, you hit your short. So bang, we got heavily short here. The obvious stop was going to be, actually the obvious stop is going to be up here, but what we were looking to do is if that tape selling suddenly subsided and it started buying, we just, I'd just come straight out of the trade. I wouldn't give it any room at all. Um, it's a different type of trade to the normal setup. You're not working off levels as such. You've got the momentum behind you. You're waiting for that next flush, that next push, and then you're going to jump on it. That's the, that's the idea of the trade. That's the premise. That's what you're looking for. If it dies and you've misread it, then you get out, get out instantly. And it allows you to do a slightly little bit more size that way um, because you're either right immediately or, you, or you're wrong. In this case, it worked brilliantly. We push right down here. There's absolutely no reason to close. And we push down, we push down. And if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I love to see this low tick, minus a thousand tick, good flush of volume. And if you were watching, this level here, this exact point here, coincided with our magic number 10,000 on the Dow Cash. There's no other reason, you don't need any other reason than that to close your trade. Absolutely fantastic, uh, fantastic exit point. I think we popped to 10, uh, I think we popped to 9991. And um, when I saw 9994 on the cash, I saw these minus a thousand ticks, volume picking up all out, no hesitation. 
Um, yes, we probably we, there's a possibility we could pull back, but if we pull back and then push down again, I'd have looked for the break of this 10,000 because if that breaks with some serious conviction, you're looking at a good 50 point runner. Um, but we didn't, we actually popped off it very, very viciously. Um, I didn't take the long, I didn't reverse, I wasn't clever enough to reverse off the long, especially after the data had just come out. You've got to be a little bit more cautious. So I didn't, which is unfortunate because we've got this vicious spike up and we then settled into an uptrend. Now this was interesting here because the first pullback um, to, the, to the zero ticks, that was a nice little trade for someone, uh, not a lot in it, probably about 15, 20 ticks. Uh, I didn't take it. I was a little bit concerned about this 10,000 level had been tagged and the strength of this buy off it that I thought I'd wait for a larger unwinding. And in any case, these two trades in the morning um, were, were good trades that, that put a lot in the account. So I wasn't prepared to, to risk anything unnecessarily. However, we got to this situation here where we'd pushed up uh, we pushed up to this VWAP and this lower level here and this sort of consolidation area here you can just see a lot of trade had occurred here and we just paused and I just sort of thought okay let's just get into the mind now of people who are long people who are long have perhaps caught it around here let's say people have picked up some stock here lucky ones have got it down here but I'm more concerned about people who picked up here all the way up to here and even some of the people who had been buying here and have been caught in this and are, and are quite happy to see it back to here. So you've got this sort of situation now where you've got this almost surprising surprising pullback which longs are happy with of course and shorts are a little bit uncomfortable with and you get to this point here and now people are saying okay mm, what's going to happen here everyone is looking at this level because it's been a level of congestion earlier in the day. So people are saying to themselves right um, let's just see now if it can just push higher um, a little bit nervous, they're ready to exit. And so when I see this, I look for this one final push up that pulls back immediately. It has to pull back immediately, it has to push, then pull back immediately. If I see that, then to me, there's a lovely risk reward trade. You've got a short here where it pulls back to and your stop is obviously here. So your risk is very low. You've got this sort of level of risk here, which is brilliant. And that's exactly what happened. We've got a little push up, no confirmation of the ticks. You can see they're lower here. Volume relatively low. And I took the short. The short was there. The stop was there. And sure enough, we rolled over. We rolled over nicely. Um, I scaled some out as we just broke, as we pushed onto this trend line, which was about the 10 plus 10 plus 12 tick level. And then held some for the break of this trend line. If you've got that sort of fake, you're looking basically then for everyone who's been buying it to just panic a little bit when this breaks and just start to sell and we got that we've got this little push lower here and I just started to scale out in smaller batches into these lows here and as we just started to push up here so that was a nice uh, nice little trade um, just just basically thinking about how other traders are positioned and how other traders feeling about about this move and that's really what trading's about it's about thinking of who's caught what are they th what are they thinking and having that little pop a disappointment pop you can always call it you pop up you pull back it's not quite there guys so you just see people there's no panic they just see people starting to liquidate a little bit a few shorters getting a bit excited like me and uh, a few longs thinking you know we've had a good ride let's not risk it could easily go back to the lows and they just start to push it down and that just gives us our momentum to take the trade out so that was it done for the day um, nothing else caught my eye at all today um, we just drifted along we pushed back up uh, there was a nice little little trade on here and um, as we sort of pause at this top level even a break of this trend line would have worked would have worked beautifully but uh, it wasn't for me I, w I was happy to leave it alone and probably one if I was trading I would have taken the uh, uh, the VWAP as you guys know I like to look at the VWAP volume weighted average price and as we've excurred, uh, uh, as we drifted, should I say, a fair way from it and pulled back to it, then you can expect a little pop off it. So anyone who took that didn't take much heat and were rewarded uh, accordingly. Uh, and after that, we've just had this, this sort of push up. Again, if you fancied it, there was this option of drawing your, your uptrend here. Excuse my uh, freehand drawing. You got this. Oh, let's, try, let's try that again. Uh, you've got this uh, you've got this uptrend here as you can see that's not much better but you can see what I'm trying to draw here I'm trying to draw this channel um, 
we've bounced up here and then you can take a break of this channel here especially towards the end of the day um, if, you, if you're feeling clever wait for this little pullback get short here and then just try and just drift drift the uh, drift your stop down towards the end of the day but uh, not for me didn't take that one uh, I'm gonna look at uh, tomorrow uh, we'll see where we are the close on the Dow is 10,040 which is quite low so obviously 10k still in play tomorrow 10 100 still in play tomorrow and as you noticed uh, we just popped up it in the afternoon in the uh, evening and then pushed straight back down so uh, these whole numbers are definitely something to be uh, keeping an eye on um, so that's it guys I uh, hope you had a great day as usual, if you've got any questions, email me, mark at thedaytradingroom.co.uk or visit the forum www.thedaytradingroom.com.